Parkinson's is a disease known for how much it steals away from you. It can cause balance problems, painful stiffness, and tremors that make it hard to write. Yeah, but one Emory researcher thinks she might have found a way to slow down Parkinson's with the tango. Now, the Fox Medical Team's Beth Galvin is here to explain why dance might actually make that difference. And Sinead and Tom, we've known for quite a while that exercise is good for people with Parkinson's. So it makes sense that dance would be helpful too, but the Argentine tango is complicated. You have to focus and memorize a lot of steps and stay in sync with your partner. But it may be just what the doctor ordered for these dancers you're about to meet. James Parham is doing something he never imagined a guy like him with Parkinson's disease would be doing, dancing the Argentine tango. As a young child, took ballroom dancing and learned about that much tango, so I was very interested in doing it. Each dancer here at the Atlanta VA Medical Center is paired with a partner who doesn't have Parkinson's. Box step. And Dr. Madeline Hackney is both their dance instructor and a researcher. Well, I was a professional dancer for, mm, I don't know, 11 years before I went to graduate school. Eight years ago, the Atlanta VA research scientist and Emory assistant professor of medicine began adapting Argentine tango for people with movement disorders like Parkinson's to see if this form of dance might be helpful for symptoms like difficulty walking and tremors and painful stiffness. We think that the music, the partner, the steps will allow them to improve things like gait, um, and their walking ability, their ability to do more than one thing at a time, and certainly their ability to catch themselves if they should trip. This is James Parham's third tango study since the 74-year-old was diagnosed four years ago. Tango is just, how can I say, it's regimented. Uh, you know where you're going and your partner knows where you're going. It's really good going to the music, so your brain and your body is forced to coordinate. The dancers are medically evaluated on their motor skills and cognitive function before and after the 12-week dance program and then a few months down the road. And Hackney is using MRI to measure the effect Tango may be having on their brains. In several research studies, she says they've been able to document improvements in the dancers' mobility and balance and gait. And they think this form of Tango may also be helpful for spatial recognition and improving quality of life. I noticed a total difference myself. Uh, you know, just it was subtle. It wasn't, you know, I could stop shaking and leap tall buildings at a single bound. But due to the exercise and the, the choreography of tango, I could tell my balance was a little bit better. And James Parham says that he's hooked. I think the more fun it is and the more they enjoy it and the more they feel like they're getting something out of it and maybe makes them forget about their problems for a minute or two or for an hour, that's what really is going to make a difference. And the study participants get about 30 hours of dance training. And as you could probably see from the story, the tango has been adapted for people who have movement and balance issues. So you're not going to see a lot of dips and ballroom drama out there. <laughs> but James Parham says the tango has helped with balance and stiffness and walking. And he says he's made some really good friends in this yeah. study, too, because now he sees these folks outside of the study. I love it. Yeah. I didn't see any modification. I thought they were doing <laughs> oh, a thing yeah. on the dance floor. Yeah, they were pretty good. <laughs> they they look were. Great. It's not easy. Yeah. No, it isn't. Thank Thank you, Thanks.